We come back, live long and prosper. The original Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy, joins me exclusively with quite a serious story. Leonard Nimoy created one of the best loved characters in TV history, Mr. Spock, who, with the crew of the Starship Enterprise, dared to boldly go where no men had gone before. Well, now he's facing a new challenge. He's been diagnosed with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, even though he quit smoking. 30 years ago, and tonight he's got a warning for everyone else who may have been smoking about what's happened to him during that exclusively is Leonard Nimoy. Leonard, we're going to get to the real reason you're here, but first of all, for me to have Mr. Spock in my studio <laughs> is one of the great moments of my life. I'm flattered. Does that strike you as weird after all this time? No, 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 not at all. No, no, no. I'm flattered. I really am. I, I appreciate it. Uh, it look, the, the character has, has had an enormous effect not only on me, but on a lot of people. And I'm what is it? I mean, do you have to every single day of your life have people asking you if you're logical? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other thing? What, what else do people no, say? No, what they you? ask me for is, a, is to teach them to do the neck pinch. Yeah. So they can knock out somebody that they don't like. <laughs> or they get beamed out of something. Johnny Quinn could have used a, a yeah. beam out. <laughs> he could have done. I would have just beamed out of there. <laughs> <laughs> What's extraordinary about Star Trek? Is it only three seasons of it were ever made, the That's TV right. show? 66, 7 and 8. That's Amazing, yeah. I mean, I, I, when I grew up, it was just one of the big things on television in my country and in many countries around the world. Yeah. Uh, let's get to why you're here, because I can talk about Star Trek all night, but I won't. You gave up smoking 30 years ago. Yeah. Now you're about to be 83, I think you said, next week. Next month. Next month, yeah. 83. And you look fantastic. Thank you. you. Well, yeah. other than the fact I know you've got this, this disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Right. And this is down to smoking, but you haven't smoked for 30 years. That's right. So tell me, when you discovered you'd got this, what was your reaction? Uh, dismay. I thought, this, this is unfair. I yeah. quit a long time ago. Why is this happening to me? But I, I, it's a lesson that I had to learn. I, I damaged uh, lung cells many years ago, and then as age begins to damage lung cells as well, you begin to feel it. So it, it's something that, that can sneak up on you later. 12 million people in the United States have been diagnosed with the disease. Possibly another 12 million have it that don't know it. Uh, about 30% of people who smoke will get clinically significant COPD. So this is a big deal, isn't it? And in fact, I mean, you've come in and you bought this machine. What is this machine? This is a, it? it's an oxygenator. I, I don't carry a tank of oxygen. This machine gives me oxygen. By, it, it extracts oxygen out of the atmosphere, and I get it up my nose when I need it. I'm still using it sporadically, but. A couple of years ago, I didn't need it at all. Now there are days when I need it several times a day. And that's for breathing issues? That's right. I, don't, I get shortness of breath when I suddenly feel like I can't get a full breath. I can't catch my breath. So I have to go to the machine, you know, periodically. There was a moment, and that's a serious matter. There was a moment you said you needed to have oxygen and atmosphere and so on. Right? Just, I was listening to Mr. Spock. Well, there we were. We were back on the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> Captain, <laughs> oxygen, atmosphere. Where's Scotty? Pump it up. <laughs> There's almost nothing you can say that's going to make me not think of you, Mr. Spock. However, I will try and wrestle back to the s seriousness of this. Okay. What is the message you have to communicate to people watching who perhaps are, you know, 60, 70, 80, gave up smoking yeah. on doctor's advice a long time ago, and might be worried they have this? The good news now <clears throat> is that, that uh, people have begun to understand that smoking can be dangerous. When I started smoking, there was, you didn't have that at, at, in the atmosphere. People being told smoking is terrific. In fact, uh, the, the big advertising campaign for camels was more doctors smoke camels right. than any other cigarette. Which is extraordinary now to think of that. And but you that saw was, that doctors the wearing the white coat and holding a cigarette behind, sitting behind the desk and smiling at mm -hmm. you. Then they also said things like, camels are good for your T-zone, good for your <laughs> taste, and good for your throat. <laughs> Amazing. They, they were able to, to do that kind of stuff. Right. And it, it was kind of cool. Okay, you know, doctors say it's okay. What's wrong with it? Today we know that it's not okay. So at least you have that kind of help to, to get a mindset to get rid of it, to get rid of the addiction. It is an addiction, and it's not easy to stop. I had to go through a couple of programs uh, back in the day. How many were you smoking? I was peak? smoking a couple of packs a day. I, look, <clears throat> I, tell, I tell people that I was an Olympic championship smoker. If there had been a championship in, in the addiction, I, I, could have, I could have qualified. <laughs> I could smoke in the shower. I, I, I could smoke any place. And it was something that you, it was part of my culture, it was part of my gang, my guys, the people I hung out with, it was cool to be able to light a cigarette. And when I was in the army for two years, 
the tobacco companies came around giving away free samples to the GIs. Right. And the Army facilitated that, made it possible for them to come in and give you free samples. And every time there was a break, they'd say, okay, a 10 minute break, smoke it, they got them. That was the byword. Right. So it was in the culture. Today we have a different kind of culture, fortunately, and, and people can be, can be helped psychologically to understand that it's not a good thing to do. But it, it, you have to treat it as an addiction and understand that it's, it's not too early to quit. Young people think, well, I, maybe in 10 years I'll quit, you know. The damage is being done right now, every day you light a cigarette, but you're, you're losing cells in your lungs. Let's, if I may, go back to Star Trek. Because Why not? I, I just can't think of anything I'd rather talk to you about other than <clears> obviously <throat> what you just talked about. When William Shatner came on, he's 82, so you're the same age at, at the moment. Uh, are you buddies? Do you, do you hang out together? He's a lot older than I am. Is he? He is. He was born four days before me. <laughs> <laughs> do you hang out with him? I haven't seen him in a while, now. He's very busy. He has his own life. I have mine. He does a lot of... Um, he does commercials. He does conventions. He has a one-man show. He goes about the country doing. We just don't have that, that kind of relationship anymore. What, is, what about the rest of the Enterprise? see them all uh, occasionally at, at Star Trek gatherings once in a while. I hear from them all. I, watch, I follow them on Twitter. They're terrific people. Are you I'm big on Twitter? Yeah. Do you yeah. like it as a social I, media? I'm on there because I have a granddaughter who runs a, a shop called Shop LLAP, Live Long and Prosper, where she, uh, she sells uh, Star Trek related merchandise having to do with me and so forth. I'm her grandfather, so I'm the guy who creates business for her by going on Twitter and saying, go to my granddaughter. <laughs> The things we do for our kids, you know. But when you go to these Trekkie conventions, and there's about like a thousand people all dressed More up than as a thousand. Spot. No, no, I mean, a thousand maybe dressed up as Oh, spot. okay, yeah. Is that a bit freaky, that moment, when you see them all? It's fun, it's fun. It, you know, it, it has to do with imagination. The show, the show touched a lot of people's imaginations. Mm -hmm. I see it as a healthy thing. It's a way to act out in, in a fantasy, fun uh, way and enjoy it. What was your favorite ever scene? ever seen. No, the favorite scene of any of the three seasons. I think, um, I'd have to say that the, my favorite episode was called Amok Time. Mm. It was an episode where Spock had to go back to his home planet to fulfill a marriage betrothal. And it was, it was a beautiful script written by Theodore Sturgeon, a wonderful science fiction writer. And uh, in that episode, we saw, we heard the words live long and prosper for the first time. And we saw Spock do this for the first mm. time. And Within days after I did that on the show, within days after it aired, I was getting it back on the street, and I thought we just we just hit a, a vein. So right. Uh, people on the street are giving it to me. Police officers are giving it to me. Waiters in restaurants. Uh, it was all over, and still to this day, I still get that greeting. And what is what is the technique for the old neck? <laughs> is there a particular? No, no, no you wouldn't qualify. <laughs> I've got a few people that want to wish me ill harm. It might be quite handy. <laughs> You have to go to the Balkan Institute of Technology to learn how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing acting wise? Do you still act at all? Or? No, no. I have, a wonderful, I have a wonderful life. Yeah. I'm very much in love with my wife. I have, uh, I have great kids. We have three between us. They're wonderful people. I have six grandchildren and a, and a great grandson. Uh, we have wonderful homes and we travel whenever we want to, wherever we want to. I'm enjoying my, my life very much. I started working when I was 10 years old. And I didn't quit until just a few years ago. So I've had enough of that. Leonard and Mike, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you Great and to, to talk you. to you. Thank and I wish you all the best. Thank you for bringing in the, your machine and telling me how it all works. Thank you. And uh, a very important thing, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. If you've got a fear, you may have it or you're worried about it, then contact your doctor and get yourself checked up because I would imagine, as with all these things, early detection is, is a key thing. That's the best. Leonard, great to see you. Great to see you. Too. Real pleasure. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank you.